A while back, I lived out in the middle of nowhere in Oklahoma. Due to coyotes and other animals, I'd always go outside with a knife or a machete. Well, one night, when I was 11 or 12, I was taking out the trash and the trash can was a good 50 feet from the house, surrounded by bushes and shrubs. So I put the trash in the can and went to head back when something reached from the bushes and latched onto my ankle. I figured I was caught on a branch or something, so I pulled my foot harder, but that's when I realized that those were fingers wrapped around my ankle, and they were far too long to be human. I swung the machete at whatever was grabbing me, and I heard the most blood-curdling screech I've ever heard. I ran to the house, which was one of those shipping container-shaped trailers, but the thing about those trailers is you get a hole in the side panel and animals can get trapped under it. I heard it under the house that night. It sounded like a big dog or something. I never did find out what it was. I was walking to meet up with one of my friends. We lived in Connecticut, so as far as I knew, there was nothing here that could be a cryptid or unknown to us. Well, I was walking at around 11 p.m. to meet up with my friend and chill for a while. I approached his house, specifically the garage, because I cut through the yard. As I came closer to the garage, I noticed my friend. It was him, and I did our call, which was a ch ch sound, and this thing looked at me with his face. Every detail was the same and it was a full moon that night so I could see him very clearly. I got closer, called his name, and he, it, gave no response. I just thought he was being a freak and screwing with me so I continued on my way and snapchatted him asking what the hell he was doing. He shortly sent me a snapchat picture of him at a bowling alley in a town about 30 minutes away. This was all of about five to ten minutes after the sighting. I never saw anything again, but from then on, I wasn't much of a night person anymore. I still can't shake the eerie and dreadful feeling that I had when I saw that thing. I tend to not talk about the subject much because of how much it genuinely scares me. I still can't think of what that thing was, but it mocked the appearance of my friend. The experience has seriously freaked me out and I still refuse to walk alone at night. I was operating a raid camera in Afghanistan at about 2 a.m. doing routine sweeps of a local combat outpost. I noticed something on the IR that looked like a bear but skinnier and smaller that was pacing the wall. I had the telephone operator call over to alert them of the possible wild animal. When the quick reaction force went outside to confront the animal, they gave word of no sight or contact. In the camera, they were directly on top of whatever it was out there. It moved with them until they went back inside, and we watched it pace for another two hours before it left. This still freaks me out. They were standing in the same place, and there were lights all around, yet only the IR could see it. My grandmother had a story from the late 50s. She was driving north on a paved two-lane road lined with small trees and brush with my great-aunt and one of my uncles, Ron, who was about two years old at the time in the back seat. They rounded a turn while climbing a series of switchbacks up a hill. She later said, I smelled it before we saw it. As they approached, it was standing beside the road down a couple of feet in the ditch, but it was still taller than the car by a couple of feet. When her sister saw it, she grabbed her by the arm and yelled, look out Barbara, it's a bear. And she replied, that ain't no bear. It stood there and they passed it. It looked like a very large hairy man with hair all over his face. 
Only its ears, lips, and eyelids lacked hair, but what struck her as most interesting was that it had, or appeared to have, no neck. Its head sat upon its shoulders in a strange way, and while watching them, it turned its whole body, and its hair was brown and matted like a stray dog. After they passed, she watched in the rearview mirror. She later said, It stepped up out of the ditch on the side of the road, and in one large step, it stepped all the way to the center line of the road, and in one more step, it cleared the road into the ditch on the other side of the road. And within three more, it had cleared 20 feet in the brush and trees and disappeared from sight. The whole time, she said her sister was holding her arm, crying and jabbering, but Ron, in the back seat, slept through it. This is a story one of the security guards at the university told me happened to him, and I completely believe him. One day, the security guard is in the dorm just shooting the breeze of the RA when a group of basketball players comes bolting in and runs straight towards their rooms. So the RA and security go over to make sure they're okay. Apparently, when they were walking back from practice, they noticed a humanoid figure standing on top of one of the buildings on campus. They stood for a minute, trying to just get a grasp of what they were looking at as it was dark out at this point. While they're standing there looking at this figure, it jumps down about two and a half stories and landed as a wolf. The men booked it back to the dorm as fast as they could. So security and RA go to investigate. When they get to the doors of the building and look out, they can see at the entrance of the football stadium a guy in a black trench coat pacing back and forth staring at the dorm. Both men saw the guy so they go out to see what's up with this dude, and as they start walking over in his direction, he takes off running and no shit. Dude turns into a black wolf and runs off. The guy was caught on security cameras in a different dorm, taking sage from someone's car on a different occasion. I grew up in Kodiak, which is an island off the coast of Alaska with a small town and a couple small villages surrounding the island. You can't get there unless you take a ferry or hop on a plane. Naturally, there wasn't much to do back in high school. I'd spend my time smoking out with my buddies and walking the trails. One day, I thought it would be great to pick on one of my already paranoid friends. The native Aleutic elders always told stories of the Aholuk pronounced a whole luck, which are very similar to skinwalkers. These beings were once humans who were cast out from the village and turned to black magic to survive. You can't talk about them, and very rarely would you get the opportunity to hear about someone else's personal experiences. I thought to myself, it would be funny to scare the crap out of my friend, right? So I tell him everything I know about the being while we were out strolling the trails. The sun starts going down and we're a little bit creeped out, so the three of us decide to head back to the car. As friend A is taking us home, friend B asks if I can buy him a pack of cigarettes. He just needed to run and grab his $10 bill from his room, so friend A and I listened to some tunes while we waited for him. He returns surprisingly quick and says, I've only got $3, maybe tomorrow, man. I say, okay, no problem. We say our goodbyes and we head toward my house so I could get dropped off. As I'm sitting down in my bed, I get a text from friend B. Hey, where'd you guys go? I thought we were getting cigarettes. Hmm? I replied, trying to see if he really forgot our conversation not even 10 minutes prior. He is adamant that he ran inside, tore his room apart looking for his money and by the time he found it, he ran outside and saw we had already left. He thought we just ditched him, so I tell him I could still get him smokes and walk over to his house to see if he's just screwing with me. He stands by his story to this day, and I believe him. The dude would not prioritize a prank over his cigarettes. 
thinking back to what we were talking about the whole afternoon before. I never spoke about the being until today. I live near the eastern Sierra Nevada mountains. I hike up there pretty much from May to October. A few years ago, I decided to hike this pretty strenuous trail that leads to a huge rock slide. I park and notice I am the only person there. I have two dogs. I get them out and we start up the trail. About a mile in, I come to this clearing that has a huge teepee structure in it. The trees are all woven together. I put down my walking stick and stop to take pictures. It seemed weird, but cool. I moved up the trail after the pictures and as soon as I walked past the tree structure, I immediately felt like I was being watched and the woods went silent. It was so freaking weird. No bugs, no birds, no small animal noises. Completely and utterly silent. I hike by myself all the time. I don't get creeped out or really too scared. I've seen bears and I'm sure there are cougars out there. I keep going and the feeling is getting way more intense and my dogs are starting to act weird. They are experienced trail dogs. They don't really get weird like that, staying super close to me and not making a lot of noise. I realize that I left my walking stick down by the tree structure. Oh well, I don't want to walk back down and get it and then back up. I got a quarter of a mile or so past the tree thing and the feeling of being watched was unbearable. I'm thinking, okay, rationally it's probably a big cat. So I head back down. The rational part of my brain told me to slow down. My flight response? Nope. Full speed down a 30 or 40 degree slope. I get down to the tree structure and meadow and I look down and my walking stick is gone. Like, it's nowhere to be seen. It was pretty distinct because it was made of aspen and I had picked it up somewhere else. There was no aspen in this part of the forest. I am freaking terrified. I kept running. I felt like I was being chased, but I never saw anything. Never heard anything either. Yes, it could have been a big cat, but why did it only start after I passed the tree structure and how did my stick go missing? I was nearly to the parking lot before the feeling of being watched, chased, left me. I will never go back there. Still thinking about it gives me the creeps. I was camping with some friends on a piece of privately owned land that bordered a national forest. We had our tents set up at the back of the fenced in clearing part of their property. The large mesh window of my tent was facing out towards the forest. I woke up in the middle of the night feeling as if somebody was up and about. I was looking out the window and saw a dark from head to toe, humanish shape figure leaned from behind a tree and slowly leaned back behind the tree. It kept doing this for a few minutes, as if checking out our camp. I woke my boyfriend up and I told him I thought someone was out in the forest behind us. He looked up but only saw a glimpse of a dark figure running off deeper into the woods. Nobody from our camp had been out of their tent. There were no neighbors anywhere close, and the closest campground or hiking trails were also pretty far away. I was at this park with my then ex-girlfriend that has a neighborhood on one side and a few miles of pretty dense forest on the other. We were stargazing, and as we sat in this opening near the neighborhood, I heard a rustling in a patch of shrubbery that sounded like somebody stomping around. I immediately got up to investigate as this area is known for sketchy activity. What I saw made no sense. I still feel like I imagined it or something. I saw what looked like a person hunched over with a white cloth over them walk out from the bushes and stand on this path that goes around the entire park. I turned to my girlfriend and asked her 
what it looked like without telling her what it looked like to me and she described it the exact same way I did. So we hightailed it out of there, booked it to my car and got in and I, wanting to know what the hell it was, turned on the high beams in hopes it would follow us, but it did not. Now this is where the story gets even stranger. We went to another park because we wanted to continue stargazing so we drove a few miles to this other park that is essentially a giant field. We found a bench and sat down and managed to forget about this weird encounter. About 10 or 15 minutes of this we suddenly saw, not heard mind you, what appeared to be a black helicopter fly over us in the direction of that first park. This thing was completely silent, no noise at all. I have not been able to find any pictures online that come close to what it looked like, but if you're familiar with Halo Reach, it looked like a falcon. This thing maneuvered like nothing I have ever seen. Granted, I don't know much about aviation, but this thing dipped over a tree line at an angle so steep that I thought it was going to crash. The weirdest thing about all of this is that there was someone else at that second park. An old woman walking her dog who didn't react to the plane slash helicopter at all. It was by far the strangest night of my life. I have yet to return to either park and I really don't have plans to ever do so. When I was a young teen, I was sitting on the floor in my mom's bedroom playing Animal Crossing when it got dark out. I didn't have a light on because I was in there for several daylight hours, so when it got dark, I only had the hallway light. I remember looking out the window to my left because I saw some movement, but nothing was there. Just a tree branch next to the porch shaking slightly. I brushed it off, but then I remembered we didn't have any trees in our backyard. It was about a half mile of old farmland. I stared at the branch, trying to figure out where it was coming from, and my eyes trailed it until it came to an end against a white, oval-like surface. I was squinting to see what it was when it moved. It turned, looked at me, and then slowly lumbered off. I figured I had seen a deer with some kind of color mutation, and my eyes must have been messing with me as I didn't have my glasses on. We normally had a couple herds of deer that grazed in the backyard. It wasn't until later I realized that none of the herds showed up during the time I saw whatever it was. None of the deer had a color mutation either, at least the regular ones didn't. I ignored it for a few days, but then about a week later, I was sleeping when I woke up in the middle of the night. I don't know what woke me up, but... I have a large window next to my bed that I leave the blinds up on because my dog likes to look out. I look at my dog and he is on alert, looking out the window. I grab my glasses and look at what he was fixated on and saw the thing again. I got a better look at this point, but it had fur so black that its body really wasn't visible, only having the light of the moon and garage light off to the side. I figured I was dreaming or something, but... As it moved across the yard back towards the empty field, my dog's head tracked it. My dog was shivering slightly and normally he barks at the smallest thing but it seemed like he was trying to be quiet. I grabbed my sketchbook that was on my dresser next to my bed and I quickly drew what I saw. I never felt scared of whatever it was, just kind of peaceful in a way. It seemed like it was just patrolling the area and I happened to catch it on its nightly rounds. I grew up in central British Columbia up on a mountain several miles from the nearest town, middle of nowhere. I was hiking an adjacent mountain at roughly 12 years old. It was the middle of winter and the snow, well, about four feet deep, had a thick crust on it that I usually wasn't breaking through. I'm walking along and I see these big footprints that look like human footprints, but enormous. If they were bear prints, they were unnaturally elongated and didn't have the normal claw tips. 
In the heel of one side of the prince were sprinkles of blood. I look way down following the prince and I see what looks like a tall, hairy dude awkwardly stepping through the crunchy, deep snow a few hundred feet away. I saw what was probably a tall, skinny bear walking upright through some snow, or Bigfoot. Either way. One night, my husband and I were driving home from somewhere. I think it was a friend's house, but I don't remember. And we were taking some back roads when suddenly, this creature ran out in front of our car and we had to slam on the brakes to avoid hitting it as it darted across the road back into the woods. Its body looked like a human running on all fours, but it was way too fast to be human, and its head was like a boar's. It had tusks. We both saw the same thing and were rightly freaked the hell out. Later, we dubbed it Man Bear Pig. As a child in Frankfurt, I remember some nights when it was getting late, I would see a black figure fly over our apartments. I don't know for sure what it was, but I remember it flew silently. You wouldn't notice it if you didn't see it. It would fly fast, passing over in an instant. If I had to estimate from memory, I'd say it was about the size of a car. I wasn't the only one who saw it either. My neighbors saw it, my parents, everyone. No one knew what it was. At the time, and today still, I mostly firmly believe it had to have been some kind of massive bat. Truck drivers have all the cool stories. The phenomena is known as the black dog and is much less common now due to the strict regulations around drive times. You can only drive so many hours before you are required to shut down for a certain amount of time. The dog was much more common when truckers could drive for weeks without sleep. The most common hallucination was that of a big black dog with flaming red eyes chasing the truck and jumping on the hood of the cab. This would cause the driver to freak the hell out and lose control of the vehicle. Funny thing is, no one knows why it almost always is a black dog. I barely remember it now. One night while I was driving along a frontage road, there was a tall, pale, amorphous figure standing on the side of the road. No matter how hard I looked at it as I drove past, there was no discernible detail. I tried to continue looking at it in the rearview mirror after I'd passed it, but it was gone. I was walking home one night at about 3 a.m. About a block from my house and down the road, I saw an inhumanly tall figure in what appeared to be a bright white cloth. I don't believe in ghosts and stuff. I made a comment about this and someone said it sounded like a Fresno Nightcrawler. What bothers me though, is that if Nightcrawlers are real, this one was easily almost nine feet tall, whereas most reports set them at no taller than four feet. One was at six. They really didn't do anything besides walk across the lawns of the house. By the time I got down the road, it was gone, though I did have the feeling that I was being followed or watched the rest of the way home. To be honest, I don't know what I saw, but I have a distinct memory of seeing something as a kid. When I was younger, we used to live near a large woods. Next to the woods was a field used by local Little League teams. Usually, my mom would take me along to my brother's soccer practice and I would spend time swinging around on the monkey bars with the other kids. I was only about five or six, so I wasn't supposed to stray far. One day, I was feeling a little braver than usual. 
I decided to wander further into the woods than I was allowed to go. Not far into my adventure, I found myself just out of sight from the soccer field and about to enter an area where the trees became thicker. I remember looking up and no more than 20 yards ahead of me stood, well, something. It stood upright like a person, but instead of clothes, it had pale, sand-colored fur. It was about eight feet tall and looked down at me with reddish, orange eyes. I wasn't scared by it, but I remember it stared at me with a stern expression on its face. A distinct, you're not supposed to be here look. I got the message. I turned on my heels and made my way back to the soccer field. It felt wiser to spend the rest of the time in the jungle gym with the other kids instead. This took place in northern New Jersey. I couldn't tell you exactly where or when since it was so long ago and we moved not long after. It may have been the Jersey Devil. However, as far as the lore goes, the Jersey Devil mainly lives in the Pine Barrens, which is further south. When my dad was a kid, he'd ride his bike on the gravel road for about two kilometers to get to school. He lived in the country and this was the mid 50s. He said he was riding his bike home when a short distance ahead, he saw a really tall, hairy monkey walk out of the trees and cross the road. He thought a gorilla or something escaped from the zoo because that's the only thing he could think that made sense. I asked him if he was scared and he said no. I always took my piece with me to school. I was walking my dog and he started woofing and barking at the house across the street. I slowed down, trying to get a look at what he was seeing. There was this white, grayish, boomerang-shaped thing flapping its wings really slowly like a manta ray in the water, but it was moving way too fast and was circling our neighbor's house. It zoomed around the house, disappearing into the backyard and going back around to the front maybe five times as I stood, staring at whatever it was. It was nighttime, but there was enough light to see that it didn't have any definable features. It was just an amorphous boomerang shaped thing and was flying with one wing pointed towards the ground and one towards the sky vertically. People will say it was an owl or a bat or another type of bird, but it didn't have feathers or defined edges or eyes or a head or anything animalistic. It was just a diffuse, oblong, unnatural shape less than a hundred feet away from me, moving way too fast for how slow its wings were flapping and then it disappeared behind the house. To this day, I am not sure what I saw or even if I truly saw it. The prospect of it being a vivid hallucination is almost as scary, but my dog saw it too. I swear on my mother's grave, I saw something that night. <laughs> 